Hi! This year I visited the Embedded World, one of Germany's biggest exhibitions for microcontrollers and embedded hardware. My plan was to get some new hardware for my channel, because I want to do a new series of videos about how to get GNU Linux up and running on real embedded hardware. And in particular I was looking for system on modules. And today I want to talk a little bit about system on modules and my plans for the new series of videos. Ok, so let's start. What is a system on a module? Well, basically a system on a module is a piece of PCB with all the needed parts for getting an operating system up and running. So here on this picture you can see such a system on a module. In this case it's from the Chinese company 4Links, which I met on the Embedded World and which gave me a free sample of their system on the modules in a free evaluation board. And now let's take a look what is on this board. So first we have an ASIC. An ASIC is a chip with some processor cores, mostly ARM or RISC-V cores, and with some peripherals to use like Ethernet, USB, PCI Express, so on and so forth. For running an operating system we need system memory. Therefore we have a DRAM chip here. So in this case we have 1 to 2 GB of DDR4 memory here. And this can store the volatile data. For non-volatile data, such as the Linux kernel or the Linux file system, we need a flash memory. So down here we have a flash. In this case it's an embedded multimedia card. Then you have to know if you want to use a modern ASIC, you normally have to um, power it up with various voltages. So for example the ASIC need maybe 3.3 volts and 1.8 volts and the DRAM needs 1.4 volts for example and all these voltages are generated from a single power supply. So up here we have a power supply and we have to apply 5 or 3.3 volts and the power supply will generate all the other needed voltages. So that's the system on the module. But now you'll say, okay, but if I want to use it, <laughs> where are my peripherals like USB, Ethernet or PCI Express? Well, the peripherals are there, but they are just routed to these four connectors here. So here we have all the peripherals into it. And to use the peripherals, we'll need a carrier board with the actual peripherals like the USB slots or the Ethernet files. So what's the catch with these system on the modules? Why would you use them and not just use a bare um, ASIC and do the design by yourself? Well, you have to know doing such a design isn't easy. Let's say, let's just pick up the DRAM. If you want to connect a DRAM to an ASIC, you have to route 16 up to 64 data lines from the ASIC to the DRAM and these were just the data lines. You have address lines, clocks and so on and so forth. So this is a lot of a lot of work. And these lines must match in impedance and length. So it's a really hard task to do. And then when you think of power supply, modern ASICs normally needs the voltages being supplied in a specific order. So maybe first the 1.8 volt must be available, then the 3.3 volt and so on and so forth. And all this power um, supply order is also done by the power supply. And another thing you have to know, if you want to use a modern ASIC and build it on a PCB, you normally need a lot of layers. And if you have this on a big board, the PCB will be quite expensive. But if you are having, if you're using a system on a module, then the system on a module uses a lot of layers, but the bigger carrier board doesn't. So let's take a look at the carrier board. This is the carrier board um, which is available from the company for links. And here you can see the um, system on a module is plugged onto it. And then you have all the peripherals you can imagine. So you have USB, 2 times gigabit Ethernet, and SD card. I am the two slot and so on and so forth. So if you want to build a modern design for modern ASIC, you can 
um, just build a board with your peripherals you want to use and then add a connector for the system on a module and you're done. And this will make your design much easier and faster. So using a system on a module can be quite useful. Okay, but why was I interested in system on a module renders? Well, the reason for this is first, I thought, okay, I'm just a small YouTuber. If I go to the big chip vendors like Texas Instruments, NXP, ST, Renaissance, and so on and so forth, I thought I wouldn't get free samples because these are huge companies and they maybe don't want to work with a small YouTuber like me. And system on the module vendors are more smaller companies or most of the time smaller companies. And so I hope maybe they will be more interested in working with me, which was the case. <laughs> and um, the another reason is in the later future, I want to do or I want to build an own board. And therefore, I think of using a system on a module 2 to make the design more easier for me because I'm not the most experienced PCB designer. Okay, so now you know a little bit about system on the modules. Let's take a look at my plans with them. So I will do multiple videos about these embedded Linux boards. The first videos I will do is I want to present the board. Currently I only have the board from for links, but maybe later um, I will get boards from other vendors too. I got in touch with some of them on the embedded world and they didn't give me one right away, but maybe if I mail them I could get a free sample too. Then I want to show you how to install the board support packages. So normally you get board support packages for the system on the modules and these packages contains the sources for Linux kernel and some sample application. And I want to show you how to install this and use this. Then we will do the actual work. We will cross compile the Linux kernel, Linux user space applications and some Linux drivers for it. Then I will show you how to use various peripherals. For example, the carrier board from for links has the CAM bus integrated and I want to show you how to use this. And then you have to know most um, or a lot of modern ASICs don't only have cores for running Linux. So normally for running Linux, they you are using ARM Cortex-A cores. And some ASICs also have um, real-time cores, for example, ARM Cortex-R or ARM Cortex-M cores built into it. And my chip has um, ARM Cortex-M core built into it. And I want to show you how to um, compile a program for this core and run this program or start this program from within Linux. So this is my plan for the series. I hope you liked it. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me coffee on buymecoffee.com slash Johannes for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.